oh, no, 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 you've got the wrong hermeneutical approach. He says, we should have no problem finding the Son in the Old Testament. Well, again, the specific revelation of the divine persons takes place in the Incarnation and in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God between the Testaments. But I see the Son in the Old Testament, and so did the early church writers called the Apostles. We see him in Psalm 2. Kiss the Son. We see him in Psalm 2. Kiss the Son. Uh, Psalms 2.12. Uh, yes, oh, yeah, 2.12, that's right. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled. But a little blessed are they that put their trust in him. Now, last week we kind of mentioned the whole idea of uh, you know, in Psalms uh, uh, 104, somewhere like that, it says, uh, do not put your trust in princes or uh, or faith in the Son of Man or something. <laughs> put not your trust in princes or in the Son of Man, where there is no salvation. When we get to Psalm 2. So in Psalm 2, King David is inaugurated as the king. Very famously, King David in chapter 2, verse 7, God says to him, you are my son, right? And on this day, I have begotten you. On this day. And there it's Bini, which means my son. And this text, incidentally, this quote, is going to be the quote used in the baptism scene in the book of Mark. You are my son. Um, Matthew will change it to this is my son because Matthew is going to have Jesus become son of God at his birth because he's born a virgin. So it's speaking to everyone else. So we, we, we know if King David wants to say son, he's using Ben, he's using son. What most people would find very intriguing is that when we get to the last verse of Psalm 212, if you look at a Christian Bible, it says, kiss the son, <laughs> lest he be angry, right? Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And so, you go, what? Kiss the son? And Christians frequently, in fact, on my audio program, I have questions and answers after the lecture, and I'll, on the second audio program, you actually, I was, it was recorded in San Antonio, Texas. After the lecture, there might have been a thousand people at that lecture. I'll never forget showing up in San Antonio at the Jewish Community Center. And when they brought me to speak, the whole parking lot was packed. Packed. I thought there was, must have been a wedding of bar mitzvah going on. Little I know, the whole place was, you couldn't even sit down. And I gave the lecture, How the Missionaries Paint Jesus into the Jewish Scriptures, which is a, a chapter in volume one of my book. And after the lecture, so I took questions from the audience, and there was a great deal of Christians there. And one of them said, Aha, it says, kiss the sun in Psalm 2.12. And who does that mean? It can only mean Jesus. So I asked them, did you, I don't remember the exact words, we're going back quite a number of years ago. I asked them, did you ever read it in the original? And you could see that, you could see him like becoming uncomfortable and sort of the wind knocked out of him as soon as I asked him that question. I said, it's very obvious that you never looked inside the original because in the original text, it doesn't say, kiss the sun at all. The text that's used there is Nashku Bar. Now, this is a little tricky, Bar, does it mean son in Hebrew? Bar means purity in Hebrew, just like in Psalm 18, verse 20, or 21, depending if you have a Christian or Jewish Bible. So it says, according to the cleanliness of my hands. Same thing in 18, verse 24, or 25. Same thing in Psalm 19, verse 9, openly says there that the commandment of the Lord is, Bara, it's pure. It lines the eyes. The whole book of Psalms, the book of Psalms is written in Hebrew. And if a bar means purity, like in the opening passage of Psalm 73. Here's the rub, okay? The rub is that in, in Hebrew, bar means purity. That's what it means, okay? Uh, 
The word nashku, what does neshek mean? So neshek, what nashku, nashku is a command. Neshek is a homonym in Hebrew. It's actually two different meanings. Same word, it means two different things. So nash, neshek can mean a kiss, but it also can mean a weapon like in Job 20, I mean, all over the place. In fact, in Israel, if you go to a place, let's say you go into the Western Wall, and the guard will ask you, Neshek? He's not asking you for a kiss. If, you, if he asks you for Neshek, don't go kiss the security guard, you're gonna find yourself in a lot of trouble. He's asking you, do you have a weapon with you? So Neshek has two meanings in scripture. It means kiss, and it means to arm, and therefore a weapon, all over the Bible, okay? So we have, there's the homonym, but I'm going to set that aside for a moment. So in Aramaic, the word bar means son. So what the Christian Bibles did was they, they translated nashku bar, which really means arm yourself with Purity, and we see the word bar is used everywhere in the book of Psalms as purity. There is no Aramaic in the book of Psalms. So everybody, stop it. There is none. And not only that, the author, David King David, has already told us just five verse earlier, verses earlier, that if he wants to say son, he's going to say ben. In that case, it's bini, meaning my son. So that means... We have already been informed just five passages earlier than this uh, very intriguing passage that it's not really intriguing, it follows through beautifully, but in the passage that Christians say, this proves that Jesus is the Messiah, get baptized, jump into a church, and be, who knows what. So there is no Aramaic in the in the book of Psalms, it doesn't exist. There is Aramaic in other parts of the Bible. In some parts of the Bible, there's very little Aramaic. And in some parts of the Bible, like in the book of Daniel, from um, early in chapter two, all the way to the end of chapter seven, that's, in, that's completely in Aramaic. So there you'd find bar meaning son in chapter five, chapter five. there you'll find bar son, but there's no Aramaic here, this is all in Hebrew, and therefore it's nonsense. One, one other part, okay? We're just gonna play the game, what if? So Nashku bar means, um, Arm yourself with purity, and if you don't live your life in purity, I mean, contra you know, look not conscious, but look at the chapter before it. Don't sit around with idle with with people who are speaking idly. Don't you know this? Stay away from wicked people and so on. Moshev leitzim lo Don't be around scoffers. But it's all delicious. Nashkubar. Arm yourself with purity. Now, first I'll tell you what, how missionaries frequently respond to this. So they'll say, yeah, Rabbi Singer, he's the biggest liar that ever walked on two feet, and, and that's and he's a complete liar. Why? So they'll say, I'll show you why. Because we have the word bar, not in Psalms, but in Proverbs, Proverbs 31, verse 2, and there it means son. There it means son, and all the translations say it means son. It says, what is it, my son, the son of my womb? So they'll say, aha, Tovi, a singer, this rabbi, he's a faker, a fraud, and a phony. We have Proverbs, and in Proverbs we see there the word ma bri uma bar bitni. So here we have, in Proverbs 31, we have bar, and it means son, and everybody translated as son. Of course it's talking about a son. Ah, that proves that bar means son, or can mean son, or whatever means son. This, if you never heard this argument used, then you've been, you know, you just spent the last 40 years in Bermuda, and never, <laughs> you've been in Saudi Arabia for 40 years, you never met a Christian. So this is, of course, object nonsense, because what, what comes into view in Proverbs 31? First of all, what is Proverbs 31? It's so famous. Proverbs 31 is the famous 
Aishas Chayumim, so where will I, where do you find a woman of valor, a great woman? What's going on there? Actually, those words, which we are very famous, the women of valor, is a response. It doesn't, that's not the first verse of Proverbs 31. If you read Proverbs 31, verse 1, what does it say there? Solomon is saying, look, when my mother used to talk, when she would talk to me, he's called Lemuel for another reason, but he says this, this is when my mother would tell me, she would personally say these words to me. Because his mother, just like um, Jews speak, uh, you know, we, we read, study Bible in Hebrew, but my mother would say something in Yiddish to me, and Yiddish is a, has a little Hebrew, a little, you know, Yiddish, and Yiddish is 85% German. So therefore, you're right, in Proverbs 31, verse 2, this was an oracle, this is what my mother would say to me, and she would speak Aramaic, which is a sister language of Hebrew, extremely close. It's like Indonesian and Malay, and Malay. it's like very, very close language, it's not a, not identical, but very, very close. And therefore, he's quoting his mother who spoke to him in Aramaic. And therefore, yes, Proverbs 31 is in Aramaic. And therefore, bar, there, bri, means my son. That doesn't have anything to do with Psalms. So the whole book of Psalms is not one word in Aramaic. Psalms is not a, like my mother told me, Psalms is, is written in, in Hebrew from beginning to end. And the whole, because King Solomon had uh, made some mistakes in his life. Uh, it, those mis errors come into view in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, right? And actually, it comes to view a little earlier, but it just explodes in chapter 11 where it's like getting kicked in the stomach. 10, we see it coming. 11, forget about it. And King, King Solomon had made errors in his life. He was was a, he had over a thousand wives and concubines, and she, and he his, and his failure. If you look at basically what led to the errors in King Solomon's life was, he did not. The Bible says that a, per, a king should not have too many wives. It's it will lead to trouble. King Solomon wasn't evil, but he thought because of the wisdom that had been infused in him by God. Uh, through this uh, through this extraordinary encounter with God says, what do you want? And he asked for wisdom. So King Solomon thought that his wisdom, it wouldn't apply to him. He would be able to overcome it. But as it turns out, the, the well, like, what are you doing with all these women? Like, what did you do? So King Solomon, the whole book of, so the proverb is the response is, Taka, I, you know, this is really what I should be looking for. Not a daughter of Pharaoh, but I should really be looking for a Tzaifiya Halich Beisa. I should be looking for an Eishas Chayil. And Proverbs 31, by the way, is contrasted. Remember I talked to you about both? Proverbs 30 is the adulterous woman who's an Alma. And com contrasting with 31. But that's a quote from his mother who spoke to him in the lingo de Franca, which means in in casual talk, Aramaic was used. But, and he says that this is what my mother, how she would talk to me. She, she gave me this line. So he's quoting his mother, and his mother was using Aramaic, which was the case. Jews studied in Hebrew, but they conversationally would have conversation with their parents in Aramaic, which is an sister language, very close. It's much closer than, for instance, English and French or Spanish, which are close. You know, they're all from Romance language, but they have, these are much, much closer. So that is object nonsense. Proverbs 31 actually proves the point. That's Aramaic. That's why it's translated as son, not purity. It's an Aramaic word. That's why it's translated that way. That has nothing to do with Psalm 2.12. There's not a single Aramaic word in the whole book of Psalms. Not only that, as I've mentioned, walk it back, five passages, and we have a verse that's quoted in the Christian Bible. Beniato, you are my son. Why, if, if, the, or if King David is using the word bar for son, for some crazy reason, from the whole book of Psalms, then he would have used the word bar, bari, he would have used, he would have used the, the Aramaic in verse 7. Why did he switch to Aramaic there? So nashku bar means uh, arm yourself with purity. Okay, now, we're not done yet. 
the, the, now, the icing on the whole cake is, which people, I don't know why they miss this, is that if, let's say, I concede everything and I play the what-if game, that means let's forget everything I just said to you. Just ignore it, okay? So let's just say that we have, for some reason, pink look right here and Aramaic right here, word right in the middle of everything. As it turns out, if I would translate the word bar, if I would translate in Aramaic, and let's say I, I just for the sake of, of argument, for the sake of making the point, I'll just say, okay, let's say bar is an Aramaic word which is somehow just crept its way into Psalm 212, you've got even a bigger problem. Why? Because bar, they're saying it means kiss the sun. Can I ask anybody, where is your definite article? If it really said Nashku Bar, and we're going to just for the fun of it, say Bar is Aramaic. Let's just do that. Bar doesn't mean the sun. Bar means sun. There's no definite article there. Hebrew and Aramaic have no A meaning indefinite article. So it means kiss sun. It doesn't even make sense. Or kiss of sun. What the heck does that mean? In order to say kiss the sun, you have to have Nashku Bra, not Nashku Bar. So Nashku Bar, even if... I'm going to say it means sun. That means I'm going to have a lobotomy and have, three, have my brains cut out for a moment and just have my, my frontal lobe surgically removed. You haven't helped yourself. Where did you get kissed with the sun from? And then it becomes nonsensical. You're proving this is nonsense because Nashkubar, me, if, if you wouldn't even have, let's just say Nashkubar and bar means sun. It means kiss sun. Where's your definite article? It's gone. It disappeared. It's not there. And it's not there because, because it's stupidity. This is an object bogus nonsense. Nashkubar means arm yourself with purity. That's what's delicious. And don't give me Proverbs 31, you silly boy. Proverbs 31, look at Proverbs 31 verse 1. King Solomon saying, when my mother talked to me, this is what she would, and he quoted her. So he quoted her, like I say, my mother would say to me in Yiddish, you know, whatever she would say, she would say, so that's Yiddish. So he's quoting a, 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 a max, he would quote his mother really um, asking him, you don't get what's important about women and a wife and so on. And his response is so exquisite. He then responds to them with divine inspiration after quoting her and the divine response in Hebrew about what is truly a woman of valor. And of course, this is where King Solomon, of course, is the prophet King Solomon, the great King Solomon. And then we have one of the most transformative, delicious, yummy, piha uh, pospa, that her, uh, her mouth is, is open with wisdom. And the Torah of kindliness is on her tongue. That is hardly the, the daughter of Pharaoh. You see what's happening there? This is the harmony. This is bringing out the orchestra. You see what I'm saying? It means... When you have a question, it's okay, don't worry. Because you know what? I'll tell you something. If, if someone questions your faith, get set. Because the answer is a concert of music. All those notes coming together. And it's exquisite. And what have we done when we have examined and explored this passage in the Bible? What have we done? So then, what we've done is we go... Whoa, look how delicious this all is. Look how holy this all is. Now we understand Proverbs 31. Look at this. Hashem gives us all kinds of kisses and hugs and love when we explore. So therefore, it's all object nonsense. Nashku bar, even if I were to remove half of my cerebellum, bar doesn't mean the sun. Where did you get the definite article from? From where? We got it from your, from your sister-in-law who put it there. There's no definite article. It's done. 
We'll move on. So there's your answer. The answer is, of course, it's silly. Proverbs 31 is an Aramaic, a quote from his mother. So she spoke to him in an admixture of Aramaic, a little bit of Hebrew. This is the way we all speak. It's like Yiddish today. Yiddish today is, as I said, at 85% German. But what's the other 15%? So there's a little French, there's a Russian in there, and a lot of Hebrew. Outreachjudaism.org. You can find the two-book volume set along with the 24-pack CD that goes with these books there. Uh, I'm going to run the ad now for you so you can see. Uh, then a little bit more up close, and also notice within here the page that displays the uh, the index and the glossary. Still love it, Rabbi. Very well laid out. There it is, right there. Um, hard to hard to have to squint with this because everything is so beautifully spaced. Nice large text. It's really awesome. And so again, you've got the disputation. That is such a fact. If you guys haven't seen the disputation, I strongly recommend watching that. That is so cool. And then the debate with uh, Rabbi and Paul Humber, uh, the fascinating books, uh, excuse me, the fascinating prophetic dimensions hidden in the book of Chronicles. And then he's got his one through four DVD part. Let's get biblical lectures in Jerusalem. <laughs> יציר נברא ואת נעשה בחף צוקו אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נועה והוא היה והוא עובד, והוא עובד, והוא יהיה בתפארה. אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציא נברא לעת נסע וחפצה כל הזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציא נברא לעת נסע וחפצה כל הזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עובד בתפארה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציר נברא את השר וחפצו כל אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עובד והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה אדון עולם השם הלך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נסע וחצה כל הזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו עם אחורה והוא היה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה אדון עולם השם הלך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נסע וחצה כל הזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו עם אחורה והוא היה והוא עובד בתפארה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציא נברא לעת נסע בחפצה כל אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו עם נוח נורא והוא היה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציא נברא לעת נסע בחפצה כל אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו עם נוח נורא והוא היה והוא עובד בתפארה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה והוא היה והוא עובד בתפארה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתפארה